In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get your KDN armoured units and ordnance weapons painted. Welcome to Tabletop Ready. My name's Michael, and in this tutorial, I want to show you how to finish painting the KDN Combat Patrol box, which includes the ordnance weapons and Sentinel. I've already made a tutorial covering how you can get your infantry from the Combat Patrol painted, which includes the KDN weapon teams. So now we can focus on painting the actual ordnance weapons and sentinel. Any brushes and paints I use in this tutorial will be linked in the description as well as putting them on the screen when I use them. And if you enjoy my content I would love for you to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. It really helps get my content out to more people. If you want to help support the channel and what I do, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon which I'll also link in the description. I really do appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to creating all the content on the channel and it also allows me to keep making improvements to the quality of the videos. And I really massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people who have made this tutorial possible. I would also like to say a massive thank you to Matt Belinsky, Tabled Miniatures and Cosmin Pinate who have recently become supporters or who have donated to the channel. Thank you so much. I've built these miniatures and sub-assemblies to make painting them easier, as handling large models can be quite intimidating and allows us to get to the areas that may be difficult to get to if we fully assembled them. I've also undercoated our miniatures using Chaos Black Undercoat Spray. I've chosen this colour because we're going to be painting a lot of metals and black, giving us an overall darker tone. Whilst we're painting the weapon ordnance and sentinel, I do want to show you some more advanced techniques and tricks that you can use on some of the other units in Akkadian Army, including building on top of what I've already shown you when painting Akkadian Infantry. Through this tutorial I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get the Ordnance Weapons and Sentinel from the Akkadian Combat Patrol painted, and to make this easier I'll be splitting the tutorial up into different chapters. In this first section of the tutorial, I want to show you how to paint armoured panels, including how to make them look weathered and more interesting. When it comes to painting large flat areas, we can end up with something that looks pretty plain and boring. So let's see how we can make armour look more interesting. The first thing we're going to do is paint our base colour, and the colour we're going to use is Vulcan Green. To make sure we're getting a smooth looking solid colour, we're going to want to thin our paints with an equal amount of water first of all. It's also a good idea to remove some of the paint on some paper towel as well to give us more control over the paint so we aren't applying too much all at once. When painting we want to keep our brush moving and make sure we're not going over areas we've already painted as we want to avoid creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And once you're done you'll notice that because we thinned our paint it hasn't covered very well but that's okay as we can just repeat the process and paint another layer. Painting multiple thin layers gives us a better finish that doesn't ruin any details on our miniatures. Continue to paint layers until you have a nice solid colour and just remember to let each layer completely dry before doing another one. Learning to apply layers and painting our miniatures this way is very fundamental to achieving better results that really make the difference. So now we know this, we can apply this to painting everything else in this tutorial. So now we have this flat colour that doesn't look very exciting, so let's see how we can break this colour up using a glaze. To do this I'm first going to thin down some Ronox hide with an equal amount of Lamy medium. Doing this makes the Ronox hide more transparent. Pick areas on the armour where you think there would be some dirt and grime build up, usually around the bottom on a large panel, and we want to make sure we paint an even thin coat, and this is what we would call a glaze. Even though we use quite a thin mixture for our glaze, try not to think of it as a wash. We tend to use washes to create definition. A glaze however is mainly used to tint an existing colour or to create tonal variation in a more controlled way. You can build the glaze up if you want it to be stronger. Just make sure to do this slowly, letting each layer completely dry before glazing again. If you feel like you've overdone it, you can do the reverse and create a Vulcan green glaze helping to soften the Ronox high glaze we just did. 
and as well as painting the ordnance armoured panels, the same steps and techniques are used to paint the lighter green panels of the Sentinel. Glazing is the technique that you'll see most high level painters using, because it's so powerful in the way it can be used to blend, show variation and create interest on your miniatures, so it's definitely worth learning and practicing. With the panels looking less flat and more interesting, let's go over how we can get these panels highlighted. Whenever I'm highlighting, I first like to keep a brush separate just for highlighting. As well, we don't need to thin our paint as much either because we want a strong colour and we're not using multiple thin layers this time. Again, I like to remove excess paint on some paper towel as this will help prevent those thick blobby lines. The first highlight we're going to do is a chunky highlight using Lothurn Forest and this wants to be quite a thick line. This highlight is painted along all the edges and around details and this is going to help define the different shapes of the armour. With our first chunky highlight done, our second highlight is an edge highlight using Creed Khaki and this is a thinner highlight that is painted within our chunky highlight. To make this easy to paint we can angle our brush and run it along any edge we want to paint our highlight. For any edges we can't do this, we just need to take our time and paint thin lines where we want our highlights to be. When this is done, you should be able to see what a difference it's made, bringing out all the details and shape of our armour. If there was one technique I would tell people to learn and get good at, it's highlighting. This is because it massively helps us to improve our skill with the brush, and the time and effort we put into it is worth the investment. The last thing I want to show you in this section of the tutorial is how to impress people by painting little marks and scratches. Using Creed Khaki, this is pretty much the same as when we did our highlights, it's just we're painting little marks and lines in random places this time. Take your time and try not to overdo it, it's better to be subtle. So now we've learned some of the basics and more advanced techniques of painting, let's move on to getting the other areas of armour painted. I now want to show you how to paint the other colours of armour that you see in our Ordnance Weapons and Sentinel. We can use the same skills and steps I've already shown you to paint some of the other areas around the Sentinel and Ordnance Weapons, and the only thing that really changes is the colours that we use. For the darker green areas start with Nocturne Green for our base colour, making sure to get that solid colour. Once you've got that solid colour we can use Caliban Green to paint a chunky highlight, and then Nurgling Green for the edge highlight. Whilst we're painting the different black areas, we can actually change the colour of the highlights to change the tone of the blacks. This is a really simple way to separate out all those areas that are the same colour, making things look more interesting. Let's start with some abaddon black to get all those areas and details we want to be black painted, then we can get on with getting them highlighted. The first way of highlighting that I'm going to show you is for the weapon casings so they stand out more, making them more noticeable against the armour. Start with Dark Reaper for our chunky highlight and Femrisian Grey for our edge highlight. Painting all the weapon casings like this really helps me to imagine that they're more maintained and looked after, more so than some of the other equipment you might find on a Sentinel at least. The second way of highlighting black is to start with Eshin Grey for our chunky highlights and Dawnstone for the edge highlights. Now all the main areas of armour are finished. The last big thing to get painted are all the metals, which I'll show you how to do in the next part of this tutorial. In this section I want to show you how to get all the metals painted. To paint all the silver details start with lead belt jar for our base colour. We now want to give these areas some definition to help the details stand out more. For this we're going to apply some Norn Oil and you only need enough to cover these areas comfortably so the shade doesn't pull up too much in areas. When the shade is fully dried we can also use a shade, this time Agrax Earth shade, in areas we think oil and grime is likely to settle, like the base of antennas and around the bottom of pistons on the legs to add interest. To finish the metals let's do a dry brush as an alternative to highlight raised areas and edges. To do the dry brush first work some Runefang steel into the bristles on the brush and then remove as much of the paint as you can until you can't see any more coming off onto the paper towel. After that rapidly move your brush across the details and edges, 
Doing this will deposit the paint onto those areas leaving the deeper areas and recesses creating those highlights. This is a great alternative if you're not so confident painting the highlights. Just remember it's better to use a smaller brush and to build this up slowly. So now we've finished all the metals, I can show you how we can use a recessed shade to bring out all the features and details on our ordnance weapons and sentinel. We can create even more definition helping to bring out all the details and features using Rhinox Hide in all the recesses and around panels. This is known as a recess shade and the idea is to paint the Rhinox Hide directly into the recesses, panel lines and around details. We use a Rhinox Hide rather than something like a bad and black because it adds some warmth to our colour palette. It also kind of looks like dirty water and mud has built up around those details. We've pretty much got everything painted at this point, but there's still plenty to get done including all the different weapon options that are included. Let me now show you how to get all the different kinds of weapons painted so you're ready for whatever comes at you. There are a lot of weapon options included that all have different features depending on what type they are. So let me show you how we can get them painted. It's worth getting all these different options painted as they can be changed out depending on what you want to use. And for most of them we can get them done with what we've already learned, but for some we still need to work on getting them finished. To finish the flamer, paint the nozzle first using Retributor Armour. Next apply Agrax Surf Shade over the entire nozzle. Use some Norn Oil in the recessed areas and around rivets. Reichland Flesh Shade can then be used on the first half of the nozzle once the other shades have dried. Highlight the nozzle using Moonfang Steel. For the plasma weapon, we can use Sertek Green to paint the coils and to also paint a chunky line around the edge of the plasma coil area. Now use Temple Card Blue to first paint the actual plasma coil and then paint a thinner line within the Sertek Green to build up a plasma glow. Baharoth Blue is now used to paint the raised ridges of the coil and to the edge highlight. Finish with using some blue horrors to make some areas more prominent. The last thing we can get painted is the missile, and to get this finished, first paint the nose of the missile with Corax White. The yellow stripes can then be painted using Avalon Sunset for the base colour, and Dawn Yellow for an edge highlight. With all those weapon options finished, there's not much left to get painted, so let's now work on getting everything else done. Let's finish up this tutorial working on getting all the remaining details finished, which includes any lenses and screens. For the visor on the Sentinel, start with Dark Reaper for our base colour. Next paint half of the visor with Rust Grey. Finish these details by painting a line around the edge using Fembrazine Grey. To paint the ammo crates with the ordnance weapons, let's start with Death World Forest. Recess shade with Rhinox Hide. Elysian Green for the chunky highlights. and then we can finish the ammo crates with an edge highlight using Ogryn Camo. For all the tyres on the Ordnance weapons, start with Corvus Black. Eshin Grey is then used for the chunky highlight, and Dawnstone for the edge highlight. And the last thing we can do is thin down some Morfang Brown and paint this into all the treads of the tyres and recesses to look like mud has built up in all those areas. So with everything painted, let's finish up by putting all our parts together and basing them. It was definitely worth the effort using some of these more advanced techniques and tricks on these larger models, making them more of a feature. So let's see how they turned out.
with our ordnance weapons and sentinel painted, Arcadian Combat Patrol is now finished, and I hope I've been able to give you the knowledge and confidence to get your own painted. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel to help get your miniatures painted, so make sure to check those out as well. I really enjoy making these tutorials, and if you enjoyed it, make sure to give the video a like and let me know in the comments. You can support the channel by becoming a member or joining the Patreon. Any support goes a long way to helping create this content. And if you don't want to miss out on future content, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.